What's up, everybody? Thanks for hopping back in to Crunch Time Plays today. Whether you're watching on YouTube, listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, just want to welcome you. And, and we're continuing our journey around Major League Baseball today. We're going to hit on the Chicago Cubs and, and a lot of the NL Central as well with, with Taylor McGregor. She's from Marquee Sports, covers the Cubs. And then you can also find her on college football and ESPN here in the fall. But Taylor, thanks so much for coming on with me today and hope you're doing well. Hey, thanks for having me. So happy to be on. Yeah, nice off day for me. So glad this worked out. So I've been asking this to, to all the baseball people I bring on whenever so Blake Snell, you know, gets pulled there at the end of the World Series game with the with the Dodgers. And then and then Wendy's comes out with that that epic kind of roast of the Rays uh, during the offseason. But so I've been asking a lot of baseball people that I bring on, but do you have anybody that you want to roast today? Something that's been on your mind that, that you, that you've been thinking about over the past few weeks? Nothing. No, I, uh, gosh, I wish I could be more creative for you. No. Um, you know, I, I understand the grind that it is for a lot of these guys. So nothing comes off no, I can't shoot. I'll maybe I'll maybe I'll think back, but I can't come up with anything right now. I'm kind of lame. <laughs> That's all right. Any, any anybody like per- personally that, that you that you just that you just feel like roasting today, and nothing, nothing comes to mind. Um, no, I I shoot. You know, let me think. Let me think on that one a little bit, and maybe I'll. I'll come up with something good. Hey, we'll, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it at the end. But but starting off with, with the Major League Baseball stuff I got for you, I want to start by asking you your thoughts. I know the new – we're going to have a new CBA next year. The old CBA is expiring this year with the players, and, and there's been a lot of talk about some changes that are coming, the universal DH, and there's a couple of uh, different things like that and a couple of things that they're experimenting with this past year and this year with the seven inning double headers and the, the players starting on second uh, during extra innings. But what are, what are your thoughts on some of those rule changes and, and, and what rule changes do you like? What's a couple that you, that you don't like and how will major league baseball go about increasing that, you know, fan interactivity going forward here with the new CBA? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things that we've seen that I'm glad they're trying because you can only find out really if you like or hate something by trying it. Um, And I think that was exemplified last year with the runner on second base and extra innings. Like when they announced that, I was like, oh, geez, I did not think I was going to like it, but I love it. I think it brings an intensity immediately when you pop into extra innings and what I had found in in years previously, like once you get into extra innings, guys start to press. And so they, sometimes those games just drag on and on and on because, because the offense, just everybody wants to be the guy and they don't have great at bats. And so the games kind of just keep going on. But with this one, like you can get creative in the way that you drive home a run and um, it, it just brings that extra intensity immediately. And, and the game's, have gone faster, which I appreciate. So I've really enjoyed that, that one. Um, the universal DH is something that is a hot button topic for people. Oftentimes they're very opinionated one way or the other. I was glad last year that the NL got to experiment with it through that 60 game sprint. I still kind of, I go back and forth. Like I am not one of those people who's like ban the DH or you know, whatever. And so I feel like there is, there is something to the good old national league way of doing things where pitchers hit um, and and there creates a different type of strategy, but I also don't want to see pitchers get hurt. And, and I think we've, we've seen some instances. I mean, Kyle Hendricks for the Cubs during spring training was sprinting to first and you thought for a second, he hurt himself and your heart drops. And so I understand both sides. I'm really not passionate about it one way or the other. Like I can, I can get on board. I think the DH is coming, the universal DH. So I guess we'll just have to hop on board with that. Um, And then I'm excited to see some of the rules that the Atlantic league announced yesterday with pushing the rubber back a foot. 
um, I think benefits the hitters, right? Like this game, it's just the pitchers have become so much more dominant. And so if you want to see the ball and play more, like do stuff for the hitters. And so there's some, there's some interesting rules that I am glad they're testing out and we'll see ultimately what sticks in baseball, but just glad that, you know, they're testing things out like baseball rules are not written in in stone. And so it's good for us to try different things out. And if it's best for the game, then, you know, change, change things up. So I'm not the one making the decisions. I just have to live with the decisions that everybody makes. So I'll um, just sit back and kind of wait and see. One of the things that I found funny watching, you know, the Braves here locally the other night was was you know, Max Freed's on on the IL now with a, with a pulled hamstring, and he got mm-hmm. running from second to third. And I look on, you know, just some different places, and I see, well, if we had the universal DH, this wouldn't happen. But then, you know, you got to realize, I mean, pitchers have been running around the bases for years now in the National League, and this is just an isolated case. So. It's just kind of funny to me what listening to that the other night. There's always going to be debate. And I think, um, you know, you could go back and forth. There could be something that happens with the DH in place. And people could say, well, remember when pitchers hit? You know, I, I just think it goes both ways. And that was, you know, you hate to see Max Freed down for that because he's one of the best pitchers in our game. And so that's that's another instance where you're like, I – I understand the universal DH because I don't want those guys hurt. I want to, I want to see them playing. It's better for our game when the best players are playing. So, um, so yeah. How difficult is it? Do you think for, for general managers in the national league to cut and, and managers as well to kind of manage the roster? Cause I know a lot of, a lot of guys you would want to sign those guys if you had a DH, whereas if you didn't, you would be more concerned about starting or signing some of those guys because of their abilities in the field, not just at the plate, but how difficult does that become in in this debate? And what are some of the GMs that you're hearing thinking about as far as that goes? Well, I think it is an interesting, something interesting to bring up. Like the Cubs just played the, played the Brewers and you look at Vogelbach and you say, well, they probably signed him because they wanted to be prepared if there was going to be a DH. And so with the uncertainty, obviously there comes uncertainty in the free free or the front office, excuse me. So um, I think that is absolutely a challenge. And I think the GMs are always privy to information that we're not privy to. So I'm sure they, you know, they're a little bit more keyed in on what's going to happen in our game, but I think absolutely it provides a different challenge in their jobs. What a, what are your what are your thoughts on? Um, I know the MLB is always trying to, to Major League Baseball is always trying to grow the game. That's why they're experimenting with these new rules and different things like that. But it it se- seems to me that a lot of a lot of the disinterest from fans comes from the fact that you can't watch a lot of these games. I mean, I know a lot of the regional networks are are blacked out. That there's been a lot of of controversy as far as as far as TV deals for for you know the Bally Sports is a thing now and and we're just thinking about it here locally I mean the Braves watching the Braves not not many people can get the Braves I mean you got to have either Spectrum or, or one other thing to get the Bally Sports channels but how how important does do the TV deals become uh, here in the next couple of years to kind of spark some more of that fan interest. I think marketing in general should be uh, something that Major League Baseball takes a, a closer look at and, and really, really markets the sport to the younger generation, because that's been talked about for a really long time. And I think the blackout restrictions are something people can point to. And absolutely, that's a problem. I mean, I just heard Ian Happ, the Cubs starting center fielder, his mom lives in Columbus, Ohio, which is too close to Pittsburgh. And so she was blacked out on opening day and couldn't watch her son play. And, and that's an example of a mom who might have even more resources than just, you know, a 12 year old kid. So it, it, that is something that I think needs to get looked at. That's been a topic for a while that, that um, something needs to give there. Um, Cause there are, of course there's, there's the money contracts involved and I don't think it's as easy as a solution as everybody thinks, but um certainly something that major league baseball needs to take an eye at a close eye look at. Um, but I think the marketing of the players is an interesting one. And, and I've talked to people who are really privy to 
the marketing industry and what Major League Baseball could do better. And a lot of them say player driven content. Um, and, and, you know, you think about a major commercial right now. Can you name a Major League Baseball player who's on a major commercial? It's okay. really hard to do. <laughs> But then you, you look at Patrick Mahomes in the NFL and you look at several, I mean, LeBron James is all over and some of the NBA stars are, they're all over. And so I think um, just getting the exposure to these players out there and, and doing a better job of, of putting, pushing out content that's player driven um, could be, could be helpful. I don't think it's a one, um, you know, one thing's going to change change the trajectory of all of this. But I do think there are certainly things that Major League Baseball could do to better market and, and grow the game to fans. And we'll just have to kind of wait and see. But I think there is a push from a lot of different people that something needs to happen. One of the, one of the, the rule changes in that they're testing out in the Atlantic League, and we, you touched on it earlier, was moving, moving the mound back to, to 61 feet, six inches. And it's always been at 60 feet, six inches. And then you know, one of the, I think one of the driving factors that comes from that is, you know, every pitcher seems like it's throwing 95 to 97, so many strikeouts in the game. But then, you know, when we had the, when we have the, all the home runs and offensive firepower, there are, people are like, oh, we need to deaden the baseball and, and make, and now we're, we're talking about, oh, there's too many strikeouts. We want to move the mound back. But where, where do you see as a, a kind of a balance there as far as some of these changes? You know, I think uh, it's going to be a kind of wait and see to how some of these adjustments to the game rule changes impact our game, right? I think what I'm for is more balls in play. I want to see the ball in play more because you don't like the three true outcomes of the home run or the strikeout or the walk. Like you don't want any of that. So um, you want to see guys putting the ball in play um, and we'll, we'll kind of look at what that means in the long run. Um, but I'm just again, for, again, putting the ball in play more. One of the other hot topics, the last thing I got for you on the rules is, is the, the major league expansion talk was a couple of the a couple of expansion cities. I know Fox sports and major league baseball put out a, a tweet a couple of days ago with, with some top potential cities for major league baseball expansion. And I think a lot of those, cities were for cities like Nashville or I know Montreal in Canada was on there, Las Vegas, Charlotte. We're, we're a couple of the cities that if Major League Baseball does excite, decide to expand that you would like to see. You know, a lot of people talk about Vegas or the opportunity to, to open up a more a sports gambling market for baseball. And then I know, the, but also the Braves are, are kind of in the, the Nashville and Charlotte markets as well. So they're, they're kind of against the expansion in those cities. But what couple cities do you look at uh, for Major League expansion? So I've, I've thought about Portland. I think the Pacific Northwest. Um, I think the state of Oregon could really get behind a Major League Baseball franchise. I think Nashville. I mean, Nashville's one of the fastest growing cities in the country. Um, they've, they've been huge fans of, of, um, the Titans and then the, their, their, why am I blanking on their NHL franchise as well? Um, the, the Predators. so the Predators, thank you. Um, you know, the attendance has been phenomenal to those games. And I just think that would be a great city. I love the city of Nashville. So maybe selfishly, I'm like, that would be awesome. Um, we'll see. I, I think the expansion um, is coming eventually now who knows the exact timeline of that but there are, are there are a lot of talks of a lot of different cities people I, my coworker loves new orleans would love to see them expand in new orleans um vegas i think would be cool i mean obviously cubs have chris bryant he would love to see it in in vegas his hometown so we'll, we'll wait and see i'm per personally for me i, I would like to see I, i'm like you i would like to see it in, in nashville but also in and you know, I don't think being in Nashville is going to affect the, the market for the for the Braves too much. I and mean, they still got all the other, you know, team. They still got the Carolinas, still got the whole state of Georgia. So I, I'm Nashville would definitely be at the top of my list. And then and then Las Vegas. And to talk about just how big the sports betting, sports gambling is now, I think it would mm -hmm. open up a entirely new market for baseball if they had a team 
in Las Vegas, but kind of switching to the Cubs and some of the National League, National League Central stuff. And we're here with, with Taylor McGregor. She does an incredible job for the Cubs. And then you can also catch her in the fall on ESPN covering football. But what have, what have you seen from a lot of the National League Central teams this year? We kind of take a drive around the around the division or as we sit right now a lot of the team are pretty much every team is kind of hovering around that 500 mark what what kind of things have you seen from the reds and then brewers cardinals and pirates that that you've seen so far and how does that affect the cubs going forward yeah i think um it's been a small sample size something we've we've talked a lot about this early going is small sample size small sample size you know cubs hitting small sample size We'll see. Um, I think Reds got off to a really hot start. I think that's going to even out over the course of 162. I think the Pirates, um, you know, they, they've got off to a slow start. I think they're going to be the worst team in the division. So there's not, not a ton of surprise there. I think Brewers have a really good pitching staff. I kind of said that before we came into the season that I thought they had the best pitching staff in, in, the, in the central so they've kind of proven that to be true. Um, the Cubs is the big story is the offense, or I should say the lack thereof. Um, and I think, you know, the guys seem pretty, pretty confident that that's going to equal out over time. Um, and I think, again, only time's going to tell. So I think what we've seen out of the NL Central is it's going to be a tight race. I really think it's going to be a four man race into September with with the Reds, the Cardinals, the Brewers and the Cubs. So I'm looking forward to that. What do the do the Brewers have the best outfield in baseball? I know they, you know, have Jackie Bradley Jr. now, and you pair him up with Yelich. And it seemed, do they have the best defensive outfield in baseball now? Do you think they have four really solid outfielders? And I think you know, with with Yelich out right now, and um, Lorenzo Cain went on the IL yesterday. Um, that the versatility that they have there it showed up for sure. So um, I think, you know, I, I think they have a really strong outfield for sure. So I don't know if I'm ready to say they're the best off or defensive outfield, um, but they're solid for sure. What a, kind of talking about looking kind of beyond this year, talking about Javi Baez and he's going to be a, a free agent and come come the all season. And when you think about all these, all these massive contracts that have been signed in the all season with, with Tatis and Lindor, will the Cubs try to go try to match a lot of that money uh, with Baez or, or do you think they're looking at, at something more, you know, just a little bit of a cheaper option uh, shortstop going forward after this year? Well, I think you can't really compare Javi and Lindor. I think they're very different players. Um, I think Lindor is an elite talent, and I, I don't think Javi – I think Javi's great, but I don't think he's going to make the money that that we just saw Lindor make. So I'm not sure what the Cubs are going to do. You kind of have the, the the three core players in Bryant, Baez, and Rizzo. They're all due up at the end of this year. So it's going to be interesting the way that they choose to spend their money. Um, their, their pitching staff, you know, is also – um, yeah, fluid as well after the next few seasons. So do they try to sign the money in, in the, in the pitching like they've done in the past and maybe rely on some of the potential guys they have coming up to the system? I don't know. I, I it's going to be interesting. And, and we talk about it a lot, you know, amongst our crew, like, what are they going to do? I don't know. We'll see. Who, who's going to be the first, I know eventually we're going to get somebody that that gets like a 400 million dollar contract who who, who do you think is going to be the first player well, to trout did. million? didn't trout make 400 didn't he make 400 uh, i don't know i mean he should he's the best player in baseball hands down i gotta look it up mike trout contract 426 yeah, yeah 426 right. and a half million so he, he deserves it. I mean, he's the, the best player in baseball, no doubt. So, uh, but yeah. We got to get, got to get the, the angels to the playoffs. I know people would love to, to see, I Mike, know, to I see know, Mike Trout I know. in the playoffs. Right. <laughs> well, 
What what have you seen from from Jake Arrieta so far this year? He's pitched in a he started a couple games, leads the team in strikeouts. Is is he a kind of a Cy Young contender this year? No, I don't think he's a Cy Young contender, but I think what you see out of him is a guy who's going to go out and compete for you every single time he takes the ball. I mean, we've seen a few times where he hasn't had his A plus stuff, but he still goes out there, competes and gives a chance. It gives the team a chance to win. So I think for him, if he if he can be a solid three, number three starter um, who you know can eat up 160 ish innings this year, it's going to be a really good signing for the Cubs. What do you, kind of we're kind of projecting ahead a little bit towards the towards the end of the year, but as we sit here in in April, what do you think the the ceiling is for this team? Oh gosh, well the ceiling, um, I think they're a playoff team. Now, how far they can go in the playoffs, we'll kind of see how how um, how much the offense gets going. But I think in the NL Central again, I I I think the Central is a winnable division. Um, there's certainly things that the Cubs need to improve on and nobody's denying that, but we'll see. What, if, what, if, what do you think is causing, I know a lot of the, the offensive struggles and the, what, what have you seen from, from that lineup? And, and are there some tweaks to the lineup that you're expecting here in the next couple of weeks? Well, I think there's some guys in there who haven't had, the best starts, but who I think you can count on long-term. I think Rizzo is one of those guys. He he's gotten s- slow starts in the past and, you know, at the end of the year, he's going to put up what, what the back of his baseball card says. I think Chris Bryant's had a great start to the season. Hobby's really come into his own um, lately. He hasn't, you know, done some of the things that we, we've, we've seen him do. Um, I think there are some things about his at bat that he would probably like to improve. Ian Happ, same way at the top of the lineup. Wilson Contreras as well. Jock Peterson had a really strong spring and he's kind of tweaking with some things, trying to, you know, find his way. Um, so I think there's a lot of, a lot of things that you kind of just have to trust the process and trust that what you're doing with the, those guys is eventually going to work out. Cause there are a lot of really good hitters in the lineup. It's just kind of a matter of, of getting them all, getting them all going. As we are, we're kind of winding down the last thing I got for you. I want to just go back to my first thing. Did, did you think, did you think of anybody that, that you want to roast today? Maybe just, um, I had a coworker to not be named eat some of my food so I'm gonna roast them (laughs) I left my food out and they ate it and I'm like why did you eat that that was mine but um (laughs) I don't know that was the only thing I could think of but you know what good for them I would probably have eaten leftover food too that was sitting out which is kind of weird in this COVID area but that's besides the point maybe that you know i I honestly would, you know, as long as it doesn't have somebody's name on it, or if it's just sitting out, like I probably yeah. would. Eat. I probably would. I know yeah. that's probably not the safest thing to do these days, but, but yeah, I, honestly, we'd ordered, I probably... food. we'd ordered food and, and I hadn't opened the, the part, part of my food that was mine. And so I think he just, I don't know, thought it was his or something and ate it. And I was like, Hey, that, those are mine. Those are my fries. So, uh, it's all good though. It, you know, I was just giving him a hard time. <laughs> That's awesome stuff. Taylor, thanks so much for, for coming on today. Tell, tell people where they can find you on social media to, to give you a follow and keep up with what you're doing with the Cubs this year. And, and you know, you can catch you on in the fall doing some college football as well. So in this opportunity just to plug anything else that you're doing as well. So just uh, on social media, Taylor underscore McGregor. So I'll kind of be all over, uh, reach out, and and we can have some conversations. Hey, Taylor does Taylor does a fantastic job. She wears a lot of different hats, and and she wears them all very well. And Taylor, we'll definitely have to have to do this again uh, in a in a few weeks to to kind of catch up with you again. But but thanks so much for coming on, and and hope you stay safe and well. And we'll talk to you a little bit down the road. Awesome. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. All right. That's Taylor McGregor. And and thanks so much to her for coming on today. And thank you for listening to Crunch Time Plays today. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. It's been another edition of Crunch Time Plays MLB. God bless everybody.